Welcome to your video homework for this week. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about photosynthesis. This is going to be the first video in a larger unit over the next couple weeks that's going to be discussing energy and how organisms capture, store, and use it. So let's jump into photosynthesis. Let's look at a couple fundamental laws of nature. There are two big ones that really determine why we need photosynthesis. The first is that matter is not destroyed. By that I mean atoms, the actual elements of the world, can be moved and are reused throughout life processes and throughout the earth and even the universe. Those atoms can be rearranged into lots of different molecules, but they're always still there. They get conserved. In this diagram down here, you can see the carbon in carbon dioxide, the oxygen in carbon dioxide, the oxygen in water, and the hydrogen in water. These atoms, when combined with other atoms, can be converted into a sugar molecule and an oxygen molecule, where the same carbons are still there, the same oxygen molecules in red are still there, and the same hydrogen atoms that were in water are still there. The atoms are not destroyed, they're just rearranged into different molecules. The other fundamental law is that energy can change form, but when it changes form, some is always lost as heat. Another way of saying this is that chaos always increases in the universe. Energy may start out in one form, like sunlight, and it might be captured within the chemical bonds of molecules, and from there it can be changed to kinetic movement, which allows you to walk and talk. But eventually, every step of this process, some of the energy is lost as heat. So while matter is not destroyed, matter cycles around, energy does get lost. It flows through living systems and then is lost forever. What this means is that organisms must always be capturing new energy. Some organisms are able to capture energy by grabbing onto molecules from their environment. Humans do this because we grab onto, we eat chemicals in our food. We eat sugars and we eat chemicals from other animals, their proteins and fats. We are called heterotrophs. Any organism that eats other organisms is a heterotroph. Hetero means other or different, and troph means eaters. So it means eaters of other things. However, if there were only heterotrophs in the world, we would run out of things to eat after all of the organisms had been eaten. While the matter in our food would be digested and expelled as waste, the energy is lost. So we must always be capturing new energy so we would always have to be eating new food. But how do we make our food? We cannot. We can only eat other organisms. Luckily, there are other organisms that are not heterotrophs that capture energy from a nearly infinite sunlight energy. They use that sunlight in order to make their own food. They are called autotrophs. Auto means self. Troph means eaters. They sort of eat themselves. They eat their own food that they make. And the way they make their own food is through a process of photosynthesis. Photo meaning light, synthesis meaning making. So they make food out of light. They don't actually convert light into food, but they're able to capture energy from light into molecular bonds as we showed over here, the molecules can be rearranged into new molecules and the chemical bonds in these new molecules can store energy from sunlight. I'd like you to watch this video. This is a time lapse of a sunflower developing from a seed into a plant. And as you watch, you can see how very slowly the leaves start to get bigger and bigger and bigger, you can actually see how the 
plant grows even though it's not eating other organisms like we are. The question here is, where does this material come from? Where does the material that this plant is being built from coming from? You might think water or the soil that the seed is in, but it's actually only a tiny portion of the material comes from the soil. Where does all of this mass, all of these atoms come from that are growing to make this sunflower? Well, all that material actually comes from that process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis can be described as a chemical equation. It can be described as carbon dioxide and water being combined, capturing the light energy and forming a molecule of sugar and a molecule of oxygen. And you can see that the matter is not destroyed. The carbon here is the same carbon over here. The oxygen and oxygen here is the oxygen and oxygen atoms here. And the hydrogen atoms from water is this hydrogen atom in this molecule of glucose, which is a sugar. So plants use this sugar in order to become bigger. They actually use sugar to make their cell walls. And they can also use the energy that's from sunlight that's trapped in this glucose molecule in order to power their bodies in order to grow and reproduce. So one of the very important parts of this lesson that we're going to be working on is for you to be able to describe how this process of photosynthesis happens inside plants and for you to be able to track the atoms and molecules as they rearrange and capture sunlight energy. In next week's video, we're going to be talking more specifically about what happens to sugar after it's made by plants. And also we're going to talk about how do heterotrophs get energy. So far, we've only really talked about how autotrophs get energy. And in the future, we're going to talk about what happens to that oxygen, this one right here, that came out of photosynthesis. And we're also going to talk about how do we actually use sugar to power life. The larger unit that we're working on is all about energy capture, which is photosynthesis, storage, which is that sugar, and then later on we'll talk about how energy is used. So thank you for watching this week. I look forward to having some very interesting discussions with you on this topic of photosynthesis and as you work to make sense of how these processes work in different organisms. But for now, I'm going to leave you with a song. There's always going to be a link right down there. And as always, be sure to come to class with some wonderful questions.